Julius Productions. Sit down, get comfy, and away your aura. Hello there, everyone. Today we've got a horror story collab with Adara the Shallot. Their link will be in the description below. But before we get to them, I have a story of my own for you. Annabelle Lee by Edgar Allan Poe. It was many and many a year ago. In a kingdom by the sea That a maiden there lived whom you may know By the name of Annabelle Lee And this maiden She lived with no other thought Than to love and be loved by me I was child and she was a child in the kingdom by the sea but we loved with a love that was more than love I and am I Annabelle Lee with a love that the winged seraphs of heaven coveted her and me and this was the reason that long ago in this kingdom by the sea a wind blew out of a cloud chilling my beautiful Annabelle Lee so that her high-born kinsman came and bore her away from me to shut her up in a sepulchre in this kingdom by the sea the angels not half so happy in heaven went envying her and me yes that was the reason, as all men know, in this kingdom by the sea, that the wind came out of the cloud by night, chilling and killing my Annabelle Lee. But our love, it was stronger by far than the love of those who were older than we, of many far wiser than we, and neither the angels in heaven above nor the demons down under the sea can ever dissever my soul from my soul of the beautiful Annabelle Lee for the moon never beams without bringing me dreams of the beautiful Annabelle Lee and the stars never rise, but I feel the bright eyes of the beautiful Annabelle Lee. And so all the night tide, I lie down by the side. Oh, my darling, my darling, my life and my bird bride, in the sepulchre there by the sea. In her tomb by the sounding sea. Click Clack, The Rattle Bag by Neil Gaiman Before you take me to bed, will you tell me a story? Do you actually need me to take you up to bed? I asked the boy. He thought for a moment, then, with intense seriousness, Yes, actually I think I do. It's because of I've finished my homework, and so it's my bedtime, and I'm a bit scared. Not very scared, just a bit. But it's a very big house, and lots of times the lights don't work, and it's sort of dark. I reached over and tousled his hair. I can understand that, I said. It's a very big old house. He nodded. We were in the kitchen, where it was light and warm. I put down my magazine on the kitchen table. So, what kind of story do you want me to tell you? Well, he said thoughtfully, I don't think it should be too scary. Because when I go up to bed, 
I will just be thinking about monsters the whole time. But if it isn't just a little bit scary, then I won't be interested. And you make up scary stories, don't you? I know she says that's what you do. She exaggerates. I like stories, yes. Nothing that's been published yet, though. And I write lots of different kinds of stories. But you do write scary stories, right? Yes. Know any stories about Click Clack and the Rattleback? I don't think so. Those are the best sorts of stories. Do they tell them at your school? He shrugged. Sometimes. So, what's a click clack and the rattlebag story? He was a precautious child. And was unimpressed by his sister's boyfriend's ignorance. You could see it in his face. Everybody knows them. Well, I don't. I said, trying not to smile. He looked at me, as if he was trying to decide whether or not I was pulling his leg. He said, I think maybe you should take me up to my bedroom, and then you can tell me a story before I go to sleep. But a very not scary story, because I'll be up all in my bedroom then, and it's actually a bit dark there too. I said, Shall I leave a note to your sister, telling her where we are? You can, but you'll hear when they get back. The front door is very slammy. We walked down to the warm, cozy kitchen into the hallway of the big house, where it was chilly and dreary and dark. I flicked the light switch, but nothing happened. The bulb's gone, the boy said. That always happens. We'll be all right, I said. Yeah, said the boy soberly. I'm very glad you're here. He seems less precautious now. His hand found mine, and he held on to my fingers comfortably, trustingly, as if he'd known me his entire life. I felt responsible and adult. I did not know if the feeling I had for his sister, who was my girlfriend, was love. Not yet. But I liked that the child treated me as one of the family. I felt like his brother, and I stood taller. And if there was something unsettling about the empty house, I would not have admitted it for the world. Stairs creaked beneath the threadbare stair carpet. Click clacks, said the boy, are the best monsters ever. Are they from television? I don't think so. I don't think any people know where they come from. Mostly they come from the dark. Good place for a monster to come. Yeah. We walked along the upper corridor in the shadows, walking from patch of moonlight to patch of moonlight. It really was a big house. I wish I had a flashlight. They come from the dark, said the boy, holding on to my hand. I think probably they're made of dark. And they come in when you don't pay attention. That's when they come in. And then they take you to the back of their... Not nests. What's the word that's like nest, but not really? Um, a house, maybe? No, it's not a house. A lair? He was silent then. I think that's the word. Yes, lair. He squeezed my hand. He stopped talking. Right, so they take the people who don't pay attention back to the lair. What do they do then, your monsters? Do they suck up all the blood of you like vampires? <laughs> nah, vampires don't suck all the blood out of you. They only drink a little bit, just to keep them going, you know? Flying around? Click clacks are much scarier than vampires, however. <laughs> I'm not scared of vampires, I told him. Me neither. I'm not scared of vampires either. Do you want to know what click clacks do? They drink you, said the boy. 
Like Coke? Coke is really bad for you, said the boy. If you put a tooth in Coke, by the morning, it will have dissolved. That's how bad Coke is for you and why you must always clean your teeth every night. I heard the Coke story as a boy and have been told as an adult that it wasn't true, but was certain that a lie which promoted dental hygiene was a good lie, so I let it pass. Click clacks drink you, said the boy. First they bite you, and then you go all icky inside, and all your meat and all your brains and everything except your bones rot and melt, and then they suck it all up from the holes where your eyes used to be. That is disgusting, I told him. Did you make that up? We reached the last flight of stairs, all the way into the big house. No, I can't believe you kids make up stuff like that. You didn't ask about the rattle bag, he said. Right, what's the rattle bag? Well, he said, a small voice from the darkness beside me. Once you're just skin and bones, they hang you up on a hook and you rattle in the wind. So what do these click clacks look like anyways? Even if I asked him, I wish I could have taken the question back and leave it unasked. I thought they might be huge spidery creatures, like the one in the shower in the morning, and I really hate spiders. I was relieved when the boy said, They look like what you aren't expecting, what you aren't paying attention to. We were climbing wooden steps now. I held on to the railing of the left. As he walked beside me, it smelled like dust and old wood. That high in the house. Do you know what story you're gonna tell me to put me to bed? He asked. It doesn't actually have to be scary, you know. Maybe you could tell me about this evening. Tell me what you did. I won't make much of a story for you. Your sister, my girlfriend, she just moved into the new place on the edge of town. She inherited from an honor someone. It's very big and very old, as you know. I'm going to spend my first night with her tonight. So I've been waiting for an hour or so for her and her housemates to come back with the wine and the Indian takeaway. See, said the boy. You know all that, but you don't think. You just let your brain fill in the gaps. He pushed open the door to the attic room. It was perfectly dark now, but the opening door disturbed the air, and I heard things rattle gently, like dried bones and thin bags, and swirl wind. Click, clack, click, clack, like that. I would have pulled away then, if I could. But the small, firm fingers pull me forward, unrelentingly in the dark.